这个节目是咱们的差异丰富。下面由他陈氏太极拳研究会将为我们展示陈氏太极拳二路节选、发现练习以及太极拳技的应用。Nice dance. Now let's get something different. Utah Chan's Tai Chi Chan Study Group is going to give us a Tai Chi demonstration of second pose selecting movements, power releasing, and freestyle pushing hands. 好，那我们话不多说，请欣赏陈氏太极拳表演。为了保证您的观看效果，请注意一抛不落一下哦。谢谢。Wong Shen Bi. After Wong and his student Kelly Cross Johnson demonstrate parts of the Chen Tao Chi, this is one of the two solo forms practiced in Chen Tao Chi. Master Wong's Tai Chi lineage descends from Chen Fuke, who developed his forms in the early 20th century in Henan Province. Uh, these Chen forms were further developed and promulgated by Chen Fuke's student Li Jin Wu. And Li Jing Wu's student, Chin Chun Sun, who was master of Wang's teacher. Tao Chui, in addition to including Qigong benefits, is also used to develop the body's integration and relaxation. It's used to develop the release of Jin for power when Tai Chi is used as a martial art. Each of the sequences and postures in Chen Tai Chi solo forms have one or more applications as martial art techniques. The practice of the Tai Chi forms is the foundation of all skills developed under Chen Tai Chi. After, after this demonstration of some parts of the Tao Chi form, Master Wong and Kelly will now demonstrate some other Chen Tree techniques used to develop relaxation, situational awareness, and the release of power. The first release of power of Fa Jin, Master Wong will demonstrate is the cover heart punch, which demonstrates the on Jin which of course is directed downward and through a foldable joint of his opponent. Here, Master Wong demonstrates his strike and the claw are hit very quickly. This causes him to lose his root and structural stability. The second Fajin Master Wong will demonstrate is the elbow strike, which can be directed through the claw as well as the top of the head. Again, it is used to destabilize Kelly's stance. This causes Master Wong's opponent 
to please just focus your attention and not focus on the cosmic. Third quadrant to demonstrate the saccade. Shoulder stone. This could just drop at a point C coordinate as well as dislodging from the ground. The final gym, Master Wong will demonstrate this VA, or the whipping or striking gym. Unlike the other gyms, Master Wong has demonstrated this power will not break an opponent's grip or stand in the board with the VA. The arm release intended to deliver a strong, sharp strike that penetrates an opponent's body and causes pain to distract the thought, which disrupts his mental board. Kelly will now get a chance to repay Master Wong for his instruction using the same techniques. There are subtle differences in the ways that different practitioners apply these gyms. That depends on the individual temperament, physique, and disposition. Kelly typically applies some of the VA gym in most of his talks, which is less gentlemanly or benign than the manner just demonstrated by Master Wong. Using the VA gym at full power involves a subtle mix of body relaxation with an almost reckless release of momentum energy. If done incorrectly, it's easy for a practitioner to injure himself. Um, <laughs> without fighting so hard. Uh, next. Master Wang and Kelly will demonstrate um, Chen, Sam, Shou, Tui, Shao, or push hands. Um, push hands is used to promulgate the ability to relax and listen to an opponent's body while simultaneously trying to disrupt their ability to do the same thing. Push hands is sometimes described as a two person practice. Now, if it was attempting to do yoga or seated meditation while another person is trying to push you off your feet and walk you to the ground, it teaches relaxation and good rest. At the highest level, a very skilled push hand practitioner is able to fend off the opponent's attacks while constantly disrupting his equilibrium so that he's preoccupied with staying upright rather than doing something to harm him. <laughs> Thank you for the